this episode is all about living the dream. In fact, there are two dreams happening here. The first dream is the McLaren. This is the 570S, 562 horsepower, really fast, really luxurious, an amazing car that's doing amazingly well. Before 2000, McLaren was really just a race car company. They didn't build production vehicles. And that was McLaren's dream to build, well, a car like this. They have a whole range of supercars now. Let's see what this thing will do. When I was 16 years old, if you had told me, I'll tell you what, Jay, when you get to be a grown up, You'll be able to call up any car company you want, and they'll send cars to your garage for you to drive that you could film for your TV show. Did I think that would ever happen? No. That's why this is called living the dream. But the best part is that I can help make other people's car dreams come true. So I'm going to meet up with fellow Boston comic Bill Burr and let him take his dream car for a ride. But first, as always, we eat. It's a good hot dog. This is delicious. I grew up in the North Shore, Andover, Mass. You grew up where? The South Shore. When South I was really Shore. young, I Look, I'm out of here. Yeah. South Shore. <laughs> That's what I love about Boston. Everything is North Shore, yeah. South Shore, Italian, yeah. Irish, any way that they can divide people. You know, for a guy from the South Shore, Bill Burr, pretty funny guy. He does stand up, he's got his own animated show. If you like hearing a guy ramble about everything from corned beef to automobiles, check out his Monday morning podcast. <laughs> no, you don't f with your face. Okay? I understand liposuction. They screw that up, you can put on a shirt, right? <laughs> There's no shirt for your face. I remember not getting much encouragement when I started out when I was a mess, which oh, is no, why you I didn't get, tell. No, you get no encouragement. Yeah. I majored in like communications with a focus on radio, and that was just to get over Mike Fright. I knew I was going to be a comedian. Right. I remember like the butcher at the meat store. My mother mentioned, I was so embarrassed, like, yeah, he's majoring in radio. He wants to become a radio broadcaster. And the guy's sitting there with his bloody apron. He's just going like, I don't know. Everybody wants to be the star. Yeah. <laughs> you never work Lenny's on the Turnpike or any of the Sandy's in Beverly or any of those places that no, were around. Jesus, how old do you think I am? I started out in comedy clubs where people came out to actually see the comedy. Oh, no. No, no you had it easy. Well, my first two gigs were easy. My third gig, that was the first time I ever went up and bombed it. I, the first time I told a joke and got nothing. Yeah and you feel like that sonic wave of nothing just hit you right in the chest. Hits you right in your dream, I like to say. <laughs> I had a lot of those nights, like, I remember walking out of a club, be like, yeah, the show wasn't that good, man, that redheaded kid sucked. And then that just play on, on a loop. I'd be like, you know. You know, we used to run into the bathroom after a show, sit on the john, shut the door, just to get reviews. I would never do oh, that. Yeah, it was hilarious. To this day, you had I to hear them that. urinating, which was annoying. But I would uh, never do that. At least you got an honest review of the, of the show. Did you ever have that feeling uh, on the road, that dark feeling of, am I gonna be the guy that doesn't make it? Oh yeah, everybody does. Yeah. I still have that feeling. I'm a huge believer in low self-esteem. I actually know what you mean. Yeah, only actors and criminals have high self-esteem. When you have low self-esteem, <laughs> You, you don't assume you're the smartest person in the room. That's where I work all the time. Like, I got a house with a pool. I haven't been in the pool in 25 years. Every time I walk towards the pool, I get that. So, what are you doing now? Well, you sit in the pool, you're a big Beverly Hills guy now, you got nothing to do, you got nothing broken around here, you got a good time to sit. No, I don't, you're right. I gotta go fix this, I can't go. But it's your voice. Yep. You know, that's the voice I hear when I walk towards my pool. Hey, what do you, you think, nothing. you're better than us? What, do you got a gardener? And what, do you got a trainer? What, you got yeah. I think there's a healthy paranoia if you grew up in the Massachusetts era, yeah. because for so many people it didn't work out. Now let me ask you about cars. Were you a car guy growing up? I was a car guy, but it really uh, kind of exploded once I moved out here. I just got into them and I was obsessed with them. I started buying books, and then I found this 68 Ford F100 with the short bed, right. three on the column, oh, which wow. I had never driven. It had drum brakes all the way right. around no power steering. I would come home and I would actually be tired <laughs> from driving the car and stepping on the brakes and I now have power steering on it. Just wow, because, really? well, because there's no place to park out here and it right. was literally like, I'd be out of breath trying to like <laughs> park this thing. Let's say you're back in Canton, Mass. Canton, Mass. You're 16, what would be the cool car to drive? Uh, the Buick Riviera, 1965, right. was like that two-door, mean-looking car. I love the clamshell. Yeah, the clamshell opens on the Buick, the headlight opens, yeah. right. Like the four lights to me. Right, when I was right. a kid, that was luxurious, yeah, yeah, yeah. that you could afford. 
you know, extra lights on your car to me. To, that just meant that you were like this really rich guy. Well, I'll tell you what, I got something. I think you're going to get a kick out of this. I know you're going to have something nice. I, I mean, know, you, you I know. own every car. No, no. I, you could I, literally I, clog up the 405 no, I want, alone I, I want you, with your I, car I want collection. I want to get your impression of this. Come on, let's go out. We'll I, take a I look doubt first. I'm going to be disappointed. Come on, we'll take a look. Okay. I thought you'd get a kick out of this. Oh, no way. 65 Buick Riviera Grand Sport. Oh, my God, it's beautiful. It is beautiful, isn't it? It's gorgeous. This is one of the meanest looking cars ever made. And of course you had the clamshell. Yeah. Well, you gotta see the, how the headlights work though. Hang on, hang I on. gotta see this. Oh my God. <laughs> That's so cool. It's got 425 horsepower. It's a 401 Buick with uh, two four barrel carburetors. Two four barrel, what did this thing get per gallon? Like six miles? Uh, it's what they call a hybrid. It runs on gas and when you step on it, it runs on even more gas. It's yeah. the prototype, yeah, the prototype yeah. hybrid. This is gorgeous. I can tell you right now, I'm not cool enough to drive this car, so the only way I could ever drive this car is if I got on your show. Well, so that's thank what you. I was thinking. Yeah. I was thinking you're really not cool <laughs> enough to drive this car. You're not going to get an argument from me. Right, here. right. Well, let's do it. Come on. Okay. <laughs> this is killer, man. The turning radius on this thing is hilarious. I love the way it rides. I'm not a speed guy. Right. I like more just like cruising around. This car is like a cigar where even if you didn't accomplish anything, you feel like you did. Right, right. Look at this guy, jaywalking. I'm not letting you go. I'm driving a Buick. I'm killing it in life. That's right. If I had a Chevy, I'd let him go. Yeah, exactly. Is your wife into cars at all? No, it doesn't get it. Yes, she is. You yeah. know what car she wants? What? This is how cool my wife is. Her dream car yeah. is the car Sharon Stone's character drove in Casino. It's a 1975, I believe, cocaine white Mercedes 450 SL. That's funny. That's Co what she wants. Cocaine white. Cocaine white. What are you, married what, four years now? Yeah, four yeah. years. I'm four 37. Years. 37 years in. Yeah. Good Lord. Can you just go out and buy a car and come home with and not have to clear it with her? No, it's a car, but I have to clear it. You can just come home like, what, I'm Jay Leno. I bought a car. She can buy whatever she wants, too, so it's fine. I don't tell her, no, she doesn't. But see, she she spends it on humanitarian stuff. Like, Isn't that annoying? You're yeah, coming home with some shiny, selfish thing for you, and she's yeah, out there saving yeah, whales. That's what I mean. That's you're like, you trying mean. to make me feel bad? <laughs> that's funny. This car is me, man. It's the perfect size. This is your kind of car. This is it. It's called living the dream. That's what you're doing. That's right. So what do your folks think of this? Were they surprised how successful you've become? No, they say that they're proud of me and they like what right. I'm doing, but yeah, uh, yeah. my mother's really good about keeping your feet yeah. on the ground. Yeah. Like my brother one time called my mother up. He was golfing that day. He said, Mom, I had an eagle on, on the fifth hole. She goes, oh yeah, what'd you do on the other ones? <laughs> right back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I ever tell you the story of the Tonight Show? Why it's the Tonight Show with Jay Leno? When no. I started, it was the Tonight Show starring Jay Leno. And my mother being from Scotland would go, Oh, starring Jay Leno. Oh, like you missed a big shot. Starring Jay Leno. Oh, like he's the whole program. Like there's no music, oh. like there's no comedians. The next week, it was the Tonight Show. That's with why you changed yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, oh, another. mothers, they're brutal. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's got a Scottish mother. Oh. Bill, thanks a lot, my friend. No worries. And, and thank someday, you're going to get yourself a 65 Riv. I can see it. Well, you know what? I'm sold on the Buick product. Yeah. 52 years later. Some sales take a little longer than others. Hey, CNBC fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you'll find videos from all your favorite CNBC shows. Be sure to subscribe by clicking right here. Click on the videos around me and watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.